So we've always dreamed about traveling through time, and now we can, but not in uh, ways that we would have ever expected and will explain. So first I should say that Joe is an artist by training, and I'm a scientist, but at times those lines can blur. And so today we're going to tell you about some of our shared interests, particularly reading information from a time before humans existed and writing information into a medium that will outlast human life on Earth. The story of Genesis tells us that uh, humankind lost its naivete when one of us took a bite from the tree of knowledge. But if we consider that, that what that fruit truly contained, it goes so much deeper than any conceivable account of the difference between good and evil. The apple, all apples, contain information carried in their DNA that originates billions of years before the arrival of Homo sapiens on this planet. Their genomes contain the accumulated knowledge gained in the transition from single-celled prokaryotic organisms to multicellular eukaryotes, the development of photosynthesis, and even the most fundamental organizing principles of life on Earth. So although Adam and Eve lack the technology, we finally learned to read the information that's contained in DNA, and it is indeed vast. The DNA in our genomes is composed of nucleic acids of four types. We call them by the first letter of their name, G, T, A, and C. Uh, these four nucleic acids we call the DNA bases. And any given genome may contain millions to billions of these DNA bases, arranged one at a time in long strings along individual molecules. Information gets contained in the order in which the bases are stored in the molecule, just like the order of binary ones and zeros stores information in your computer or smartphone. At any position along the DNA strand, there are four possible base values. The information in the sequence can therefore be expressed as mathematical base four, or it can be converted to binary or digital information, like computer memory for comparison, giving two bits for every base position. A single microscopic E. coli bacterium has around 4.5 million bases of DNA in its genome, which translates to 1.125 megabytes of digital information about the same amount of digital information it takes to encode uh, a stack of four newspapers. A single human cell with a genome of three billion bases contains 750 megabytes of information, or the equivalent of a stack of around 2,600 newspapers. But DNA is unlike silicone in some ways. It encodes information much more densely in space, uh, around 1,000 times the data density of flash memory, or about a million times the density of a spinning hard drive. It's also massively more stable. So while the flash memory in your phone will likely begin to fail in the next decade or two, a well-kept molecule of DNA will continue storing information without decline for 2,000 years or more. And even that limit can be extended almost indefinitely if we consider DNA in its cellular context rather than cold storage. Among the key pieces of information contained in the DNA of all organisms are codes for maintaining that information or their sequence of nucleic acids, replicating that information, and passing it along through division or reproduction throughout time. In cells, information in DNA has a lifetime greater than a few thousand years. In fact, it has a greater longevity than the whole extent of human experience. So within our genomes are stretches of DNA that have been passed down faithfully for hundreds of millions of years. We know this because we share many perfectly conserved sequences of hundreds of base pairs in our DNA with dogs and even chicken. These sequence em sequences emerged long before the evolution of human beings on Earth. Uh, and we read them, we are reaching far across time to an Earth where humans did not yet exist. Since we have now learned to read DNA, we can begin to look through it, not only to uh, search for how life, understandings of how life functions, but also to find new tools, particular genes and genetic elements that can be repurposed to serve as the basis for a growing toolbox of synthetic biology. The genome editing technology of CRISPR that is in the news today is based on a bacterial defense system that is at least hundreds of millions of years old. But despite the robustness of DNA, <clears throat> not everything has survived. So in the fire of the Library of Alexandria around the year 650 CE, hundreds of thousands of information-bearing scrolls were converted to base carbon. This actually pales by comparison with the catastrophic loss of information in the Great Extinction events. In just one of these events, <clears throat> at the end of the Permian period, around 251 million years ago, 96% of all species on Earth were lost. 
we can't help but wonder what information might have been lost in those great extinctions, and is there possibly a way we could get some of it back? Salt-loving organisms called halophiles lived in the saline ponds of the Ordovician, the Devonian, and the Permian periods. In these early salty environments, salt crystals form, and these crystals expand and contract it contracted at different rates than surrounding brine. As a result, when these ponds dried up and massive salt deposits formed, salt crystals would trap fluid inclusions where these microorganisms could persist. Over the years, these salt deposits have become buried thousands of feet beneath the Earth's surface. We and others are now gathering salt from these deposits that formed up to 600 million years ago and now rehydrating those crystals with uh, special hypersaline bacteriological growth media. And as we do this, we find live microorganisms, organisms with intact messages from the distant past. So astronomers peer through telescopes to get a glimpse of the time before our existence. But here, lost pages of history are suddenly closer at hand than we ever imagined. And if the longevity of DNA has given us a lens to peer into the past, might it also give us the ability to send messages into the future? We human beings have always sought to, to leave our mark. As it turns out, it wasn't the, exactly the use of fire that first singled out Homo sapiens uh, as unique in the family of hominids. The early definitive, earliest definitive evidence of control of fire by a, a member of Homo ranged from 200,000 to 1.7 million years ago. So the first truly Prome Promethean apes were actually Homo, probably Homo erectus. Homo sapiens only appeared as a distinct species perhaps 100,000 years ago. Tens of thousands of years later, members of this species began to create objects and images we now think of as recorded history. Thus, modern humans may be more accurately distinguished from other hominid species as the image-making apes. So the oldest surviving parts of this history consist of painted or inscribed images on rock faces and cave walls and date to around 40,000 years ago. The use of repertoires of formal signs and symbols to record human language date to maybe eight to 9,000 years ago, and the earliest confirmed ability to read and write language as we know it dates to only 5,500 years ago. DNA has only been able to be conveniently synthesized by human beings since the 1980s. But in taking this step, we moved into a new medium for the first time, the language of the biological world. Evolution has chosen the double helix to carry its most sacred cargo. Rather than using this medium exclusively to encode instructions for the operations of living organisms, we can now use this medium to encode any information of our choosing. In 1986-87, I encoded the first human-crafted image into DNA called MicroVenus. This project found inspiration in efforts surrounding the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Considering the vastness of space and our minuscule ability to sample it with telescopes and planetary probes, you know, biological spacecraft may actually be a much more reliable option more than radar. More recently, uh, this initial work has been expanded to encode the first book and the first movie in DNA, but thus far only as naked DNA. As in the case of DNA we read from the past, the most secure and longest a uh, lasting way to store informa information in DNA is to have it contained within living organisms where it can be continually repaired and replicated. So along with another scientist, Jeff Navala, I recent fo recently found that we can modify a viral defense system found in bacteria, the CRISPR system, and capture synthetic nucleotide sequences that we design and insert these sequences into the bacteria's own genome. Once embedded within the bacteria, these sequences are replicated and passed on to the progeny essentially forever. And so we've been working on this system and we wanted to test it first by encoding images inspired by Joe's initial work. So like our ancestors who left images on cave walls, we decided to first use the system to represent a human hand. So we encoded the image of the human hand into strings of DNA bases and delivered them with a pulse of electricity into bacteria that express two proteins from the CRISPR system, Cas1 and Cas2. And these proteins will actually integrate that piece of DNA into the bacterial genome. We can then recover the image by sequencing the bacteria. And this process occurs in about an hour. And the image is stable, and we can recover it for, as far as we can tell, forever. 
with information stored in this biological context, we can actually go beyond static images. We can encode sequential images over time into bacteria. So basically, we take one image, encode it into a, a population of bacteria, take the next image, encode it into the, the progeny of those bacteria, the next into the progeny of those progeny, and so on, to generate this movie. And so in the system we employ, not only information, but, but the timing of information is, is contained. And so then we can sequence the genome of the bacteria and recover this short movie. So this is actually is reconstructed from bacteria. So why should we write information in DNA? Perhaps to archive critical data in a stable and ener energy efficient form, <clears throat> similar to, say, a seed bank. Or to build new technologies like cellular recording devices. Or perhaps as a means to communicate with other life forms. From here, we're now building a new kind of forbidden fruit that can hold encyclopedic knowledge, encoding articles from Wikipedia along with a plethora of uh, other information sources into DNA held within an ancient apple species. We think this holds much more promise for communicating with unknown intelligent life forms than any effort involving spacecraft or uh, sending spacecraft or radar signals out into space. So we really can't know how many unique star systems we'd need to reach or target to reach a habitable planet where life had developed at the moment where our spacecraft arrived, much less life that had the capacity to understand any message that we'd try to send. Thus, we must face the fact that our chances of directly communicating with another intelligent species somewhere else in the universe are slim to none. On the other hand, Earth will likely outlast humanity. Human beings may evolve into an entirely different species or for one reason or the other, join the 99% of terrestrial species that have already gone extinct. The Earth itself will survive into an epoch when all of the structures and monuments ever constructed by human beings will have long since passed away. Even this far into the future, Earth will very likely remain habitable to something that is DNA based, just not us. We can create an archive in the terrestrial biome that will be forever immune to censorship and purges. We can construct a message board that can persist through extinction events and terrible natural catastrophes. If we leave messages in DNA that will outlast us in this way, we might not only send messages to extraterrestrial life forms, we might possibly communicate with future beings right here on Earth. Like the Roman Janus facing uh, both into the past and the future, this is a medium that can cross the whole span of time. Indeed, DNA will be our time machine. Thank you. Thank you.